Hello and welcome to Croke Park. There's plenty to talk about after Saturday's intriguing All-Ireland quarterfinals. And here to do that is Enda McNulty, performance coach and of course former All-Ireland winning footballer with Armagh and Vincent Hogan of the Irish Independent. And uh, we're going to start with Mayo Donegal. Um, fascinating encounter. Were you expecting such a performance from Mayo just given the fact that they hadn't that many championship games? I was expecting such a performance. I think if you look at Mayo in the league and in the championships so far, you can see they're becoming stronger. It seems that their winning IQ is gradually developing. They, be they are becoming more tactically astute. They're filling in around their own full back line much better. I think overall Mayo maturing as a team. They're on the road a long time, much more experienced, but they've added more fresh impetus in terms of some of the players coming around midfield and so on. So overall, I've been hugely impressed with Mayo. And the flip side of that is Donegal. Donegal have been on the road since the Armagh game way early in May. And it's that they're really tired. You can see they're tired, not only tired in terms of physically, I think mentally they look tired. I think in terms of their tactical development over the last three or four years, they had a major, let's say, competitive advantage. Now that competitive advantage isn't as significant anymore because all other teams are doing what Donegal were doing when they won the All-Ireland. So now they're almost boxing with boxers who are as fit and as strong and as tactically as shoot as them and therefore they're not obviously as, let's say, as strong overall. Mayo have two new managers, Vincent. Have you noticed any difference in their team since the two new managers took over from James Horn? I think they've changed very little, and that's been the key because there was very little to change. What they have done, of course, is Aidan O'Shea is full forward. Now, what we saw in, in the Connacht final where he scored 3-4, you weren't reading much into that. Any team that puts up 6-25, that's not real championship conditions. But what we saw on Saturday night told us that yes, he is giving them a new dimension. The goal he got just on the stroke of half time was the winning of the game in my view because Donegal had come back to within a point of them and you just thought those two dressing rooms, the happier dressing room was always going to be Donegal because they come back not playing particularly well, one point and next thing O'Shea who was calling everything all night, give it to me and he just stood up and was counted. He garnered a huge amount of attention. Uh, Maureen Lacken shouted for him on the Aircom GA website. She said his consistency, temperament and strength have been constant. As a back, how do you defend against someone like Aidan O'Shea? Well, it's very difficult because he's so strong. He's a powerhouse of a player. He's good in the air. He's actually good in the ground as well, which is a unique combination. As a full back to mark a game like that, first of all, you need two players. You need somebody going in front, you need somebody coming behind you, and you need two guys that almost are, are telepathic. They're working so closely together. A good full back and a guy who's very astute at winning breaking ball, at going in front, almost like a basketball player, guarding from the front and taking him out of the game. The one aspect that we do have to mention is the, the inequity of this championship in a sense because the, the only really authentic provincial championship we have at the moment is the Ulster Championship and you know Donegal trying to win the Ulster Championship you know as Enda alluded to the, the opening game against Tyrone in Bally Buffet and they're, they're, they're kind of at peak level from then on whereas you know Mayo come through the Connacht Championship against Galway and then Sligo, they have two games played Donegal have five really tough games played to get to the same stage. It's there's a huge inequity there. Well, I was just talking about something we were chatting about. Armagh won seven Ulsters. I'm absolutely now livid that we won so many Ulsters. We've been better off getting knocked out a few rounds earlier because you learn more about yourself in defeat. There's not much point in learning about yourself when you're knocked out of the Ireland series and the Ireland quarter final. So I definitely think the Ulster Championship is a disadvantage. Are we going to get answers to the questions that we've been asking about Dublin? You know, the fact that they haven't met a Division One team when they play Mayo. Well, we don't know how good that Dublin defence is. And, you know, if you put Aidan O'Shea in on Rory O'Carroll, for example, Dublin are going to have to have a plan to support O'Carroll because Aidan O'Shea will win ball over Rory O'Carroll's head in my view. Um, I think the big thing for, for Mayo this time is the protection that Barry Moore, and you could see him getting more and more comfortable as the game went on the other night with that sweeper role. He's six foot six inches. He's huge protection for their full back line. And if there was a question mark about Mayo, and maybe there still is, it is about that full back line. They look to be leaking goals. They conceded four goals in two games in Connacht. They seem to have come up with the answer for that now. I think it's going to be a fascinating tactical battle. So if you were to call it um, Mayo Dublin? I fancy Mayo. Interesting. Vincent? I fancy Dublin. I just think they've, un they've more firepower. Last week, David Brady failed to get all his questions right in the Championship Challenge quiz and had to make a very special apology to Kieran Whelan. Tyrone Monaghan, there's lots of elements of this game that we can discuss and, and we might start with the football. What did you make of it, Enda? Combative, 
tough, hard, typical Ulster game, Tyrone have never feared Monaghan and I was delighted to see how Mickey Hart has brought a freshness again into the game despite the fact they're on the road a long time this year. Uh, I thought that they were more astute, I thought they were more composed under pressure. I know they were very physical and combative but they seemed to be more composed. Monaghan got bothered by Tyrone. Monaghan got bothered by Tyrone and stopped playing their own game. Uh, Tyrone also catered for their best players. They took McManus out of the game. If you take McManus out of the game you have a better chance to win the game obviously. Was it a case that they both played defensively and Tyrone played better at it? Pretty much, and I think, you know, Monaghan's dependence on McManus has been enormous, and the big thing for them is they haven't scored a goal in five matches, and, and I think you've come through, you've won your second Ulster title in three years, and it's the nightmare scenario for Monaghan that waiting for you in the quarter-final is Tyrone and Mickey Hart. And the interesting part about that then is their team can be quite cynical, Linda. Why, why do you think that is? I used to go and watch Peter Canavan playing for his club, Urga Kieran, in preparation for being ready for an Armagh game. And it was, it's very cynical football in general. Now, you can call it cynical, whatever brand we put on it, but it just happens. Those guys are doing whatever it takes to win. Might be nice, might be nice of viewers, certainly not good for kids, I think. Mm. But it's just the way things happen in Throne. I don't think it's that Mickey Hart in any way advocates that. I don't think he coaches them on that. I don't think the players agree on that. I think they're just looking for any edge to win, win the game. It worked against Monaghan. We might not like that. I, I certainly wouldn't commend it. It's not the thing that I would in any way advise young players or any players to do. However, it worked. I would love to see Mickey Hart come out with a strong statement now about Tiernan McCann's behaviour and just, just stand up to it, you know what I mean? Because even though they're your own players, sometimes you've got to say, no, hang on, that's not, a, that's not acceptable. And, and what Tiernan did was just embarrassing. So what are you expecting then when they go and face Kerry? I think from a Kerry point of view, the quarter-final destruction of Kildare was the worst imaginable preparation they could have for a semi-final against Tyrone. When you saw some of the goals they got, just it was like running past training cones. This is going to be the complete opposite. And Tyrone, Mickey Hart's record against Kerry in the championship is absolutely terrific. You can now give your views on the Aircom GAA Boast channel and you can download that from Google Play or from the App Store and you could be in with the chance of winning All-Ireland final tickets or be on this very panel on August 31st. Now Mark from Kerry sent in a boast saying that Eamon Fitzmaurice has a huge selection call ahead of the All-Ireland semi-final. I think Kerry have a very important strategic decision to make as to whether they bring back in Kieran Danny and, and play that direct style of football against that Tyrone defence or do they keep faith with the Gooch um, that reaps so many rewards uh, over the last couple of games. From a Kerry point of view, what do you think is their best, the best way for them to set up now against Tyrone, should they bring in Donny? should they leave Gooch? It's million dollar question, is it? Well, it's a million dollar question. I, I think either or. So start with Gooch and bring in Donaghy or start with Donaghy and bring in Gooch. What an opportunity. So what a dilemma. What, what a, a selectional dilemma. However, what I think is really, really important is they're able to evolve during the game. They're able to go from long ball to short ball. They're able to find space inside. So I think it's, it's a brilliant luxury to have any of those guys on the bench, including Tommy Walsh. Imagine being able to bring Tommy Walsh in a full yeah. forward or midfield. Like, what a luxury. And, and bring in Paul Galvin to win some breaking ball maybe when he gets incredibly tight. So they've got a huge luxury. So if you to call it? I think that Throne are able to majorly upset here. I think they're capable of doing it. I think they're capable of doing it because they will not be intimidated by Curry. They won't be intimidated and they're very smart on the line. Vincent? No, I'm going against him here as well. I think it's going to be a Kerry Dublin final, but by God, Kerry will have to earn it against this Tyrone team. Well, well, that's interesting. So that's it for this week. My thanks to Vincent and to Enda for joining me and we'll be back after the Kerry Tyrone game to talk all things football. Nice.